God is so good. And I am so excited to be here. Girls, that dance was beautiful. Actually, that's the first dance that I've seen since coming back to Nepal. And I loved it. It really just blesses my heart. To see the love of Jesus and the two of you up here and how God is forming your lives and transforming you more into His image of what He wants your lives to be. And it's happening in this room. God is moving in this place. I feel the Holy Spirit in this room. Ever since I walked through the door, I, I felt like I'm with family. I felt like I was sitting with my grandchildren and us being brothers and sisters I feel so comfortable I'm an American on the outside but I'm a Nepali on the inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. You know, my, my life never used to be like this. My life used to be totally different. I was not this happy man that I am now. But something happened in my life. When I was a little boy, like you, a little boy, I was a farmer. And I had a dream one night. And Jesus looked at me and was trying to give me a sheep. And I said, Jesus, I don't want to be a farmer. And that was the start of God in my life. My father was not a Christian man. My father was an abusive man. I was beaten by my father. And life was not easy. I'm the baby of nine children. And I don't know why, but my father abused only me. But I know why now, because God saved me. I was the only one in the family that, that got saved by God first. But let me share something with you. In the beginning of time, everything was perfect. God created Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and he was having fellowship every day. He would walk through the garden and he would have sweet communion and life was perfect just like this world and life was perfect just like this world there was nothing broken and but something happened in the garden the devil came and he lied to, to Eve and Adam and it broke that relationship that God had and it was not perfect anymore because of sin sin broke that relationship my life was broken growing up my life was broken 
Until Jesus saved me. When I was 17 years old. I was just talking to this girl earlier. And she is 17 years old. And God saved me when I was 17 years old. And I needed him to. Because my life was broken. So that sin separated us from God. It broke that perfect reunion that God had. But what did God do to help us to get back to Him? Does anybody know what God did? That we could have a relationship with him again. Who did he send into this world? Yes. 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 And Jesus. Yes. Tied the knot back. So that we could get back with God. So we could have fellowship with Him. But He didn't only tie the knot. He did something even greater. He said, if you receive me into your heart. As Lord and Savior. He said, I will come in. And I will have fellowship with you. So he took this brokenness. And when I said, Jesus, come into my life. He changed me completely. And he took away all this brokenness. And he made it totally clean again. So that there was no more sin. Sin was gone. And God made us perfect again by the blood of Jesus. And He did that in my life. And that's what He did in your life. He takes everything that's broken and He makes it new again because He loves us with an everlasting Lasting love. So my father used to abuse my grandfather. And one night I was made a plan. I was going to kill my father. And I went into the kitchen to get a knife. Because I was filled with such anger. And I was done being abused. And I was done seeing my grandfather But God stopped. Because he met me in my bedroom. <laughs> when I was 17. I was crying in my room. And I said, God, if you are real. I need your help. And all of a sudden. This peace came into me. All of the anger started to go out of me. All of the bitterness started to leave my body. And all of a sudden, this love started to flood my life. And as this love flooded my life, Jesus looked at me and he said, you're going to go in the world and do my work. And that was the beginning of my walk with God. And that is why I'm here today. Because he saved me. He delivered me. He gave me hope. He gave me joy. And that is why I go around the world to share the love of Jesus. 
Because what he's done for me, he wants to do for you. He wants to help you out of the dark places. And he wants to bring life and light into every situation that you have. No matter how bad it is, God is always faithful. Even like you, Pastor, renting this old property and flooding three times. But yet you and your wife you still trusted God you still prayed you didn't give up and now look at this this is the promise of God and we need to hold on to those promises the Bible says in this world you will have tribulation. That means you're going to have troubles. Is there anyone in this room that doesn't have any troubles? I think we all have troubles. But God is always faithful to help us to get to the other side. But we have to keep our eyes on Him. It is so important to always look to Jesus. My wife and I had our first baby. And God had promised us another baby. So my wife got pregnant the second time. And we lost the baby. And then we got pregnant the third time. And we lost the baby. Then she got pregnant the fourth time. And she lost the baby. Sometimes things happen. And we don't know the reason why. But God always has a plan. She got pregnant the fifth time. After the fourth time, the doctor said you cannot get pregnant anymore. It is too dangerous for you. He said, there's something in your uterus. And we need to operate on you. So they took her into operation. Because they saw something in her uterus. And we prayed. And she went into operation. And when she came out, the doctor came out to me. And he said, I don't know how to tell you this. We could not find anything. She got pregnant five, the fifth time. That was God. But we had to hold on to him. In those times of sorrow. And those times of difficulty, God was faithful and did a great and a mighty miracle. Just like this building is a miracle of God. And I just shared the scripture a little while ago that says, Despise not small beginnings. You know, Pastor, I have to tell you and your wife, our church is the same size as your church in America. But I'm going to tell you what. We have the biggest heart. And we are reaching the world with the biggest heart. 
that shared the gospel with Young Yi Cho. Young Yi Cho Sama. A little girl. So it makes no difference of our age. No matter how big or how small you are, that little girl gave him a track about Jesus. Just like Pastor Sun gave me a track in here. And she just gave that track to him. And said, Jesus loves you. And it saved his life. And he had the biggest, and he has the biggest church in the world. Because of a little child. That shared the love of Jesus. So your value. This kind of topic of Mulia is so important. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And God wants to use you in such a powerful way. I have seen so many miracles. And so many things happen. I'll share something that happened. Even one time when I went to Africa, God always has a plan. When I started missions, Pastor, I had no money. <laughs> my, my wife and I had no money. But you know what we did? We took out of our pockets. And just started to sow little seeds. And then those little seeds started to grow. And people started to see what we were doing because we were thanking God. We were we would post how God was blessing people's lives. And people started to see. And so people started to want to be a part of this. So there was one time we were getting ready to go to Africa. And my wife and I met a woman on the street. And she said to me, I saw you on Facebook. See, the internet. Here's the internet. Some pastors say are is so bad. And it can be used for bad things. But we need to use it for godly things. And so that's what we do, my wife and I. So we met a woman on the street. And she said, I saw you're going to Africa. She had her hand like this. And she, she gave in my hand some money. And she said, will you find a widow and help her because I'm a widow and my husband died when my daughter was a baby I said okay we will do that so we went to Africa and we had a big conference five six hundred Africans and I said to the pastor's wife, pastor's wife, is there a widow here that we can bless? She said, yes. I, there is one that came. She said, let me go get her. So she got the woman. And we went into a room with the woman. And we gave her this gift. And this gift saved her life. It was a small amount of money. The woman came to the conference to commit suicide. Because she had no money to feed her children. 
So she came to the conference to see if someone would let them bury her on the land. And take her children because she cannot feed them. But God had a different plan. And she got saved that day. And that money changed her life. <coughs> And when we came back to America, we found this woman. That gave me the money. And we told her what happened. And she wept. She's not a Christian. She was not saved. But when I told her what her gift did, she started to weep. So I went to her house and she received Jesus. It's a miracle. And so now she serves Jesus. And she gives this woman all the time blessings. And it has changed her whole life. God wants to change your life. All it takes is one seed for us to sow into the ground. And God will bring that increase. He is so desiring to help you. The Bible says he's a very present help in time of need. No matter what you're experiencing, he is greater inside of you than the devil that is in the world. God's love is so powerful. I have seen it change drunkards. And, and those stuck in alcohol. And drugs. And turn their lives around. Jesus tells us in Jeremiah 29 and in verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and on a, not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. And it says in verse 12, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. He said, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. He says, I will be found by you. That is what the Lord says. Trust when you go to your daddy. That your daddy is going to bless you. The Bible, the Bible says, if you ask your, if, if a little boy asks his daddy for a piece of bread, will his dad give him a stone? No, daddy wants to bless them. And God, and God wants to bless your life. Right where you are. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that he saved me. And that he called me. God tells us in Jeremiah 33 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. 
God wants you to go go to Him. And to ask of Him. And He will give to you. In whatever situation that you have. You know, we're all human. And sometimes we let fear come in. Even though the Bible says fear not. Do you know how many times in the Bible it says fear not? 365 times. Do you know how many days in a year there are? 365 days. I don't believe that's a coincidence. Do you know why I love all of them? Because, because they all were failures. They were. They were common people like you and me. Sometimes we think they're such big heroes. But they were not. They got mad. They got upset. Sometimes they would fight and Jesus would have to say stop. See, God uses the broken people like me. To do great and mighty things. And this is why I love Peter. Because Peter's the only one that said, hey Jesus. Is that you? Can I come? And Jesus said, Yeah, Peter, it's me. Yes, brother. So Peter started to step out of the boat. And all he was afraid. And I bet his leg was shaking. My leg would be shaking. But then Peter had something else he had to get this leg out of the boat and it's not he probably thought it's not possible for me to walk on water so he took his other leg out of the boat and I'm sure when he was on the water he probably was going like this he wasn't he wasn't cool I'm sure okay okay Jesus okay. I'm coming I'm coming okay. And, and then you know what happened? He started to see the wind. And the waves. And he's going like this. And, and he started to get fearful. And he started to sink. But then Jesus came over. He said, Ah, oh, Peter. And he reached down his hand. And he pulled him back up again. Because that's our God. Even sometimes when we're fearful. God says I've got you. I'm not going to let you sink. I'm not going to let you go. Pastor I'm not going to let this church that flooded three times stop the vision in your life. I have a plan for you and your wife. And that plan will come to pass. And that is the God that I serve. He always has a plan. All things work together for good. For those who love God. I don't care what you're experiencing right now. I don't care how bad the situation is. God promises to turn things around for good. Even if you're not sure with college maybe. You don't know what you're really doing yet. God knows the plan for you. And trust Him. 
Because he will always bring things to pass for you. There's so many other things I could tell you. So many miracles I could tell you. That God has done in my life. And we could talk, talk all night, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but I want to tell you. Serving Jesus. Is the greatest thing that I have ever done. Great is the reward of the blessings of God. When we see a sinner come to Jesus. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of God's I love how Jesus hung around with tax collectors and sinners. And the religious people thought they were so good. But Jesus said, I came into the world for those that are broken, for those that are hurting, for those that need love. And that love of God breaks everything in a person's life. When they receive Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. And I just want to share one more scripture. There is no salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given by men which we must be saved. It is only the name of Jesus. He heals the broken heart. My heart was so broken. As a young man, my heart was broken. My life was broken. He heals the broken heart. And he binds up their wounds. And Father wraps his arms of love around him. He, he has come. That you may have life and life more abundant. And I pray that each and every one of you in this room would realize that God is always for you and never against you. Trust Him with all your heart don't lean on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your ways it says I will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go that's my daddy He's my dad. I may not have, have the love, I may not have had the love of an earthly dad, but I've got the love of my heavenly father. But there's, but there's a beautiful ending to my story with my dad. When he was an old man, I, I had the love of Jesus in my heart. And I prayed for years for my father. But he was so bitter. Until the last year of his life. <laughs> he was sitting at my table. And he accepted Jesus into his heart. And he got saved. So now I will see him in heaven. 
And I have forgiven him. And I'm so thankful that God is the God that will save and deliver you and I. And if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, and if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, and if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, and if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, and if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, and if you have do it tonight. It takes a real man or a real woman to accept Jesus into your life. To admit that I can't do life without Him. So many try every other thing. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And He's the only way to the Father. So with that, the children know I told them I was going to do something. And I think the children are very smart, aren't you? So let me ask you children and big children do you think you could get to heaven on a piece of paper? If you use a piece of paper could you get to heaven on it? No? Okay. Well, guess what? I am a smart man. And I have an idea. I'm going to show you my idea. Because I'm a smart man. Okay. So, if you can't get to heaven on a piece of paper, then if you make a house and go on the roof, you can reach up to heaven and get to reach to Jesus and get to heaven. No. Do you think? No. 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 Okay. Because I'm smart man, I have another idea. And I think this idea is going to be so good. Because I'm smart man. So if we make airplane, airplane goes way high into the sky, and we can get to heaven on an airplane. Do you think so? No. 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 Ah. Okay. I have another idea. Why do I have another idea? Because why? Ah! This one, this one knew. Because I'm a smart man, right? <laughs> That's why I have another idea. Because I'm a smart man. What we can do is we can make a rocket ship. And a rocket takes you way, 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 way up. And we can get to that. Yeah. Do you think? You don't think so? I think, you know what? I think you are smarter than me. Maybe I'm not the smart man. Because there's only one way to get to heaven. And that is by Jesus. Wow. That is the only way that we can get there. Having Jesus in our heart. And he, he is the only way to get to the Father. So receive his love. And thank you so much for letting me come. It has been an honor and a privilege. And you are all family. And I was just sharing with Pastor Rajesh. Jesus is going to return very, very soon. Very soon. He could come now. But the good thing I love is that I'll be able to spend eternity with you. 
And we are going to be family together. And if you don't have Jesus, receive him in your heart. Because I want to be in heaven with you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.